morning, everyone. How are you doing out there? Welcome to the developer chat here at Privateer Press. Today is May 29th, 2019. <laughs> Always got to check the date. Uh, I'm Will Hungerford. I uh, develop things at Privateer Press. And with me is the head of development, big boss man, Oz Schoonover. Schoonover. Yeah. I pronounced that weird. Well, yeah. Nobody ever pronounces it correctly. The final boss of Privateer Press. Oh, the final boss. Really? Yeah, if this was a video really? game, I would be a mini boss or even just a common enemy, and you would be the final boss. No, you'd be that, that uncommon enemy that shows up. Like, oh, like a rare? Yeah. Cool. Like, you know, if this is some side scrolling beat em up, there's yeah. Mook, 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 you, and then Mook, 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 you, you. And then you. And then eventually maybe me. Yep. So if you're joining us uh, for the first time, we stream normally twice a week, every mm -hmm. Wednesday and Thursday. On Wednesdays, we do the dev chat at 10 a.m. Pacific, where myself and Oz talk about what's going on with various development mm -hmm. of the games. Yep. And then Get Your Paint On is Thursdays at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific with Jordan Lamb, where Jordan paints and hobbies and talks to you about hobbying and painting. Uh, as I That's convenient. I know, right? As I mentioned, we are live. So we're on Twitch. We're on Facebook. Uh, we will talk to chat as much as we possibly can. So if you're watching this later on YouTube... Uh, that's who we're talking to. Uh, you can catch the videos you might miss at youtube.com slash privateerpressprime. Uh, normally, we also have two monthly shows, the Staff Showdown and Primecast Live. Staff Showdown being live battle reports, and Primecast mm -hmm. Live being where we get people from out the company that aren't normally on the streams, like fiction writers, art directors, so on and so forth, to come on and talk about what they're up to. Yeah. Um, however, this is going to be a little bit of a different month because Lock and Load is basically yep. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, June 21st through 23rd is Lock and Load. You can uh, check out all the events and what's going on at pplockandload.com. Uh, so this is the last week of streaming yes. until Lock and Load. We will be live streaming at Lock and Load. We'll be live streaming a lot at Lock and Load. Yeah, if you want to watch Iron Gauntlet Constantly. matches, if you want to watch, I, I don't know if we're streaming any Monster Apocalypse. Uh, Tony, our video producer, gave me the thumbs up. We will be streaming Monster Apocalypse. So we're going to be streaming mm -hmm. a ton of events, and of course we'll be streaming the Keynote um, so we've been wondering, you know, what's the hot new things coming? What's the big news coming out of Private Press? The keynote is yep. just a few weeks away. So make sure you check us then. And then once we're back from lock and load and all the streaming equipment is back in the office and we're back in the office. Then we'll the resume. Sh the streams will continue things. on like normal. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, everyone in Twitch and Facebook. Good to see you all. Get in here. Mm -hmm. Oz, anything you want to bring up or talk about before we, uh, we go? Actually, can we talk about how the first... The first chat message on Facebook was good evening, and one of the first chat book chats on Twitch was good morning, and how... We have an international community. I would community. rather it was evening than morning. We have Can an we international community. That? There's people all across the world. No. On just the fact that it would be nice that you're, if this you're was tired happening and you would like to six nap. hours from now than <laughs> right now. Sorry, Oz. You got a yeah. full day of work. Yeah. Uh, one thing we should talk about real fast uh, is the mini crate, because I see people in the chat bringing up Doom Puppers, and that was a good reminder to me yep. that the current mini crate model is the Greylord Taskmaster. Uh, it's an alternate Greylord escort for your Doom Reaver unit. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing about it, I mean, it's a great sculpt, don't get me wrong. It has a dog. Yeah, but that, that model could not exist. What matters is the Doom Pupper. Oh, yeah. Who's a separate yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, he is a separate puppy. I mentioned this in the last stream. If you order multiples of this model, uh, a full unit of six Doom Puppies is legal to use as your unit of Doom Reavers. Of course it is. Uh, this is probably the greatest thing we've ever done as a company. I don't know. So, somebody was even mentioning it. Um, we we made a lot of monkeys recently, and and you know more monkeys is always more better. Monkeys are entertaining, but they're not puppies, and that is the best boy. Uh, if you get a six month sub, by the way, you do get the Bride of Arcadius model in mm -hmm. your next subscription. It is the effectively the seventh model in your six month sub. And uh, for the Legend of the Five Rings line, a couple things to point out. Uh, you have till June 5th, which is kind of creeping up on us. It is. It's getting close to pick up a uh, Moto Moto Chagatai of the Unicorn Clan, and then if you do the VIP sub for that, you get Shoshiro Sadako yeah. as your, your VIP yeah. model. And the By VIP the way, for that changed. Hold on, I nailed the pronunciation right uh, the first time. This, on the second name, the first name was a little iffy. I don't, Shoshiro Sadako? No, the, 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 the Moto Ch Chakarai. Yeah. Yeah, like what you said. Um, and that, that VIP has changed over recently. The Arcadius VIP lasts until August, so you have some time left to get that one. Yeah. So both of those VIP models are the models for a while. So what are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? What we're talking about today... We're talking about this cup. We're not talking about the How monster... How much I can shake it right next to my microphone. 
The audience loves you so much. <laughs> it's like this in the office every yeah, day, by the way. It is, except it's mostly him doing it. Obviously, as you bursting can tell by the shirt. Bursting in a song and whatnot. I went and saw the new Aladdin. It's got good songs. <laughs> um, what we're talking about today is we've been talking a lot about Oblivion. Mm -hmm. uh, when we did, obviously, the Infernal CID, and then we did the Oblivion CID. That's all related to the same product. Yes. And that product being the Oblivion box set, which we showed the actual box on yeah. last yeah. podcast live. Yeah, you guys were, were showing off all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and Oblivion, if you haven't heard, real fast, I'll give you the super fast recap of it. It's a box set coming out. Inside, there's going to be a revised rules digest, which we'll have more information about that at Lock and Load, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be this massive campaign book that has a ton of brand new art and fiction talking about the history of the Infernals, the creation of the world of, of the Iron Kingdoms, like where things started. Like yeah. we're going like Big Bang kind of like levels mm -hmm. of, of depth here. Uh, what the Infernals are all about, why they're here, how the claiming is coming about being, how humans got magic, all kinds of just really great lore. Then you've got the introduction of the Infernal Faction, which means you get to get more information about the individual units and all the, mm -hmm. the masters. Then all, all the Archons and all the Order of Illumination and all the things rising up to fight the Infernals, which are all brand new models coming out. You get a mm. deep dive into all of them. And then one thing we've mentioned a couple times, but we've never really gone super hard into, is that there's a full narrative campaign mm -hmm. in the book. So you get the revised rule book, you get that big campaign book that has all that stuff I just talked about. You get the Hermit of Hingehold model. That's the Arson Wizard we showed off on the Primecast. Oh, Arson Wizard. Yeah, he's got a giant pipe bomb. Okay. Uh, and you get a deck of cards. These are called Omen cards, and those are for use in the, the narrative campaign. What I want to talk to y'all about today is the narrative campaign. This entire gameplay structure that's being introduced in Oblivion mm -hmm. and sort of what the idea with it is. So, um, to start, so that people don't get confused, we're introducing the Oblivion campaign system and then the first campaign in the book. What I mean yeah. by that is, you get the rules to run an Oblivion campaign. Um, those are all going to be branching tree campaigns, which we're actually going to show you an example of what the this yeah. scenario tree looks like here in a second. Yeah. Uh, and it gives you the generic rules of how you can play it. This, these are campaigns for two to four players. Play them in your house, play them at the local store, play them wherever you want to. Um, they will last you anywhere from four to six weeks. I mean, if you play a lot of games very quickly, you could probably knock it out in a weekend, but that's yeah. like that's a, a lot a, of War Machine. That's a lot of games. Yeah. That's a lot of games. So the, the campaign system is the generic core rules, the structure of how to do that. And then you plug in a specific named campaign mm -hmm. into the structure and then and play it with its unique scenarios. And what the campaign introduces are narrative rules unique to that storyline, and then the scenario tree, which is the storyline that you play through mm -hmm. in that campaign, which has its own unique rules in every single one of them. What the Oblivion campaign ultimately does is when you play it, you choose an agenda, corruptors or guardians. Yeah, it's a lot like some of our other leagues we've ran over the past couple of years, where you, you, you don't play based on faction, you play based on concepts yeah. of are you the good guys or the bad guys or like what's what's the goal of your army mm -hmm. maybe there's a Kadoran general that's trying to destroy the world and a Kadoran general is trying to save the world exactly so you have some flexibility in what you're playing there yeah and and you can actually change factions and lists between your games mm -hmm. all the thing you can't change is your agenda in this one specifically in all the oblivion campaign system ones uh, corruptors are people that either know the infernals are coming or and are like actively working for them, or have been corrupted by the Infernals and don't realize what they're doing is actually furthering the Infernals mm -hmm. agenda. Guardians are people that either are just trying to fight against all the chaos or actively know the Infernals are coming and everything they're doing is trying to stop it. So yeah. you can kind of craft your own narrative no matter which faction you blame. You could be a Legion of Everblight Guardian. Mm -hmm. You could be a Legion of Everblight Corruptor. Uh, if you play Infernals in it, there's a call-out box that says, if you're playing Infernals, you may play a Guardian. If yeah. you feel like it. But narratively, that doesn't make a lot of sense. We did want to leave it open. It's a narrative, and you're allowed to craft whatever story you mm -hmm. want to. But for the most accuracy, if you're playing Infernals, you probably want to play Corruptors. Yeah. So you choose your agenda, and then the trees are separated into tiers. There's five tiers. So tier one is always a prologue. These are usually games that don't involve casters. These are going to be small-scale yeah. games, yeah. 25 to 35 points, that have special rules. They're like op opening skirmishes. You play through the prologue scenarios in line. And then, depending on if you're a Guardian or Corruptor, you split. So the tree shows you which scenarios you're supposed to play. Yeah. The basic concept is this. Every tier is a week worth of play. Tier 2, Tier 3, and they have their own scenarios. 
Whichever scenario you're on on your specific tree, you have to play that one at least once. And when you play it, you are the protagonist mm -hmm. of that scenario. And if you are the protagonist, you'll have asymmetrical rules of what you're supposed to do. If you win or lose as the protagonist of your active scenario, that marks which scenario is your next active scenario. Mm -hmm. Something funny happening to us? Yeah, there is. Don't, don't just keep no, talking. No, no, no. No, no you're going to stop no, and explain talking. what's happening. No, um, so I love this shirt. I love this shirt. I wear it every once in a while, even though Tony tells me not to wear green. Oh, can and you if, see through it? And yeah, there's like there's like a <gasps> shot there's like a shotgun blast of green on this shirt. So like it looks like you've been there's a little bit You're like magical. I am. This I'm, is why you don't wear green. Hey, hey, it's fine. You can wear green. It just shows the background. Maybe we like the background. If I had a fully green suit that was just like <laughs> just like my face showing. It would be the best thing ever, Tony. I, I Can you feel it necessary to tell our audience how often the fully green suit comes up in conversation oh, during constantly. streams. Yeah, constantly. it's a thing. I just want only my face showing. I know what I'm doing floating, next stream now. Yeah, floating next to Hungerford's face. But yeah, so this is an awesome shirt, and as fixed as the spells are green, and so you can't see them. They're invisible, like parts of my body. Yeah, it's fine. What does that even mean? I don't know. I am so happy you're on the yeah. stream today. Mm -hmm. So. As a reminder to everyone of the topic we were talking about. Yeah. So whichever uh, scenario you're on, mm -hmm. every player has their own scenario tree, and you have your active scenario. And that week when you play your active scenario, you're the protagonist. If you win or lose, that tells you which scenario you go to next. Mm -hmm. When you're playing against other people in their scenario, you're the antagonist. If you win or lose those, what matters is if you lose them, nothing happens. Your opponent just got, gets a better placement on the tree. Mm -hmm. But if you win you earn uh, omen deck draws. And yep. this is a resource you get throughout the campaign. You tally them on the sheet. And then before any game begins, um, you see how many you have. You can spend any number of them, but the most you can spend is three. So say mm -hmm. that you've won a bunch of people, won a bunch of games as the antagonist. Maybe you've earned five deck draws. Before the game begins, you go, I'm going to spend two, and you would draw two cards off the deck. After the game's done, those cards get put back into yeah. the deck. Yeah. The idea with these cards is, it, it says as the antagonist, it gives you a benefit for winning and it lets you earn special mm -hmm. things. Sometimes these cards are say like play immediately and they're immediate effects. And they're all like strange like omens important. So like one is the orders of the enemy might have been confused. So you draw it and it says like play immediately. After your opponent is done deploying, you choose one of their units and force it to redeploy, but it can't be within nine inches of where it was. Yeah. Or there's one that says play immediately. No models can ambush your AD. And then you have some that say, you may play this when a model takes damage and then this effect occurs. Yeah. So some of them are triggered, some of them are happen immediately. So, you're playing through the campaign. Every week, you have your one scenario that you have to play at least once as the protagonist in all of your other games. You are the antagonist for other mm -hmm. people's protagonist games. Yep. Once everyone has played their one game as protagonist, Hamilton's trying to slide oh, off Oh, he's me. moving around. You all, move up to the you all move up to the next tier. And how you did in your active scenario says where you go next. And there is fluff blurbs and fiction added to every scenario that tells a story so as you play through sort of the way you go, you get your own unique take on how you're interacting with what's happening in the yeah. scenario. If you do really poorly, the story is like your forces are just losing supplies and you're becoming more and more desperate. If you do mm -hmm. really well, and there's yep. all these little hidden subplots and things that might come up. Yep. Eventually, at the end of the, the next to last tier, everybody funnels back into the final tier, which is one scenario that everyone plays simultaneously. The last scenario of the campaigns are always a mega battle. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be 100 points per side, so if you're playing two players, you each have 100 points. If it's more than two players, you split up, but you're, you're still playing 100 points. Yeah, I have 15, you have 85. Let's if, go. We, if we could do that if we want. <laughs> yeah. Um, and how you did throughout the campaign provides benefits that you can access mm -hmm. in the final, final storyline. Uh, whoever wins that campaign in one giant game, that, that team, that agenda, wins the overall campaign. So the structure that's been made is basically um, to create a lot of replayability. Yeah. You can play a campaign and then play another campaign again immediately and have a completely different experience. So, like Stephen Y says, so in one game you are both the protagonist and your opponent's antagonist? No. So when you play a scenario, if it is your active scenario and you've chosen to play it against your opponent, only one person is playing their active scenario at a time. Yeah. Yeah. If you were saying, I'm playing my active scenario, then I'm the, I'm the protagonist and my opponent's the, the antagonist. Mm -hmm. Then say that opponent wants to play me again immediately and they go, I'm going to play my, my active scenario for this tier. 
they would be the protagonist and you would be the antagonist. What matters is that each player plays their active scenario one time against any opponent mm -hmm. they want to and that they're always the protagonist in it. When you're playing, uh, people on the same agenda can't fight each other. Now, in a two-player campaign, this is super easy. Like, this goes yeah. very fast, right? Yeah. Basically, every tier, you play two games. One player is their active, mm -hmm. the other player is their active in the other one. In a three-player game, there's rules to split it up where basically one player represents an agenda and the other two players represent the other agenda. And it tells you how the games work out for that. And then in a four-player campaign, you split into two even teams. Yep. And this all still works out where you're basically going to be playing a handful of games every, every tier. Yeah. So to show you kind of what this looks like, we actually have uh, an art illustration of the campaign tree as it appears in Oblivion. Now, there is a print-friendly version of this. This is a literally like a piece of art. To, yeah. to demonstrate yeah, yeah. what the, the first campaign looks like. And you'll see that each of those little bubbles has the name of the scenario you're supposed to be playing. Mm -hmm. So, tier one you see is the first three prologues that everyone plays through. Then you see it splits into Guardian and Corruptor that says what your active scenario is, and there's the name of it. There's 16 scenarios in the first campaign. Mm -hmm. So whenever you play, you go to that page number, you reference that camp, that scenario, and you use those specific rules. But you don't play all 16 because you'll notice that starting around the middle, they split into victory defeat. Yes. So you, you're going to play, if you win every game, you're going to play a couple of scenarios in a row. They're going to be different if, you're, if your teammate is losing all their games. They're going to be playing the other scenarios. You got it. Yeah. So... And like I said, there's going to be a black and white version of this in the book that is a little bit easier for you to follow. This is literally like a piece of art that's in the book that kind of yeah. gives you like a cool look at what the campaign tree looks like. So you would go through the prologue, which is those first three, and then tier two you would split, either left or right. And that's mm -hmm. just your choice if you're a guardian or a corruptor. Beyond that, after you play your active scenario, they're all victory or defeat. So you'll see that there are the three scenarios in a line you play in tier one. There's two different scenarios you might end up playing in, in tier two. Mm -hmm. Tier 3 is those four, and then that, that boomerang-shaped six scenarios are, are tier four. You see the four mm -hmm. diamonds next to them. Yeah. Then those all funnel back, and in this specific campaign, uh, Stygian Prophecies is the name of this specific campaign that's in the yep. book, uh, Gateway to Oblivion is the, the final mega battle that you play with everyone involved. And how everyone performed in the, the scenario just prior, that, that sort of boomerang-shaped tier four, indicates benefits that you can earn when you play gateway to oblivion. Mm -hmm. um, so what the first campaign is about, so we introduced the system of how to, how to play these kind of things, and the first campaign is basically something is tearing at the edges of reality, mm -hmm. and it's causing paranoia, superstition, and a hysteria in the populace. If you're a guardian, you realize something's wrong, and as more and more wars are starting to break out and more and more skirmishes are starting to happen, uh, you're trying to keep the peace. Yeah. If you're a corruptor, you see this as a moment of opportunity, and you're the people out there raiding and pillaging and doing mm -hmm. those things. And it all loops back into Gateway to Oblivion, which is when one of the first infer infernal portals opens, and infernals start pouring out of them. Uh, and in that mega battle, you're either trying to shut the portal down or open it all the way for your new masters to come through. And how you get to that point, and how you even reach the city where the portal's occurring is the story told through the scenarios in the campaign tree. Mm -hmm. And we had a question. Um, so everybody plays a minimum of seven games. Well, as, you're, as a protagonist, you're going to play seven games. But as the antagonist, you're going to play some games too, depending on how many other players there are. Yeah, so let's, let's, <coughs> say, let's say you did a two-player campaign. Yeah. So me and my opponent would play the first three scenarios, against, that's the prologue scenarios against each other. Mm -hmm. So those bottom of the three bubbles, one, two, three. Then we would split. Mm -hmm. I would play, my, let's say I'm a guardian and you're the corruptor. Yep. I would play my guardian scenario as the protagonist and then I would play against my opponent as, for yeah. their active scenario along the, the... Yeah, so if we were playing, we would play both those scenarios. Yeah. But as the protagonist in one and the antagonist in the other. Yeah. Then we would split based on victory or defeat. So basically in a two-player game at each tier, we're going to play two games. Yeah. So we're looking at three for the prologue, then three, five, seven, nine, and then the mega battle, ten. So a two-player campaign is going to be exactly ten games of, mm -hmm. of War Machine. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we got a note uh, that Facebook seems to be having some lag and chat issues. So if you are chatting to us on Facebook, we may not be able to see what you're talking about at the moment. Um, so I can't really look at chat right now because the windows are kind of flying real fast. Somebody's trying to fix things. Yeah. So our screens are crazy. Uh, is there anything you wanted to, to talk about or add to this? No. I, uh, the, we had a question earlier also about how many Omen cards you can pile up. You only earn a certain number as the antagonist. And like you said, you can only use three. Yes. So every, so every game that you win as the antagonist, it tells you if you win this as the antagonist, this is how many Omen card draws you earn. Yeah. And usually that number is between one and two. Yeah. And then the maximum you can spend is three. Um, and you don't draw, of course, you don't draw any for Gateway to Oblivion. So, that's, so it's only those middle scenarios that get you cards. So you're not going to stockpile like, I, I have 15 draws to use over the next two games. Yeah. Because it wouldn't really matter. Uh, so let's get a couple of questions people have asked. Uh, Winter Golem says, would this scale up to 16 people well? Um, it's built for two to four players. It is designed specifically mm -hmm. for two to four players. You could make alterations to add more players if you wanted to, but you are looking at a much longer, much more involved campaign yeah. if you do that. And the idea is that if you have eight players, you just break it into two pods, basically. Yeah. Because you can play anybody's antagonist, but if you're constantly shifting it back and forth and all over the place, it gets a little bit more confusing for who's doing what and whose turn is when and those kind of things. And also that mega battle would be a little and rough. the reason we capped it at four is that's a four-person, 100-point game, mm -hmm. not a 16-player, however many points game that would be, yeah. which is crazy. Um, would you see a lot of questions right now about Chuck Dogwood, but he's not in this campaign. No, Chuck Dogwood is still in the background during the building campaign. He he makes his full on appearance after after the the the, the timeline split that is Riot Quest. Yeah. Unless Chuck Dogwood is just the working name of some existing character. It's not. What if it is? It's I'm telling you it's not. What if it is? What if like the world gets so broken that Balder changes his name to Chuck Dogwood? That's not what happened. And gets a puppet. Uh, anyway. so JP Great One says, I'm curious to know about core rule changes or updates to the game besides narrative. Can you guys answer that? Not yet. We're going to uh, talk about that more at Lock and Load because we're doing a bunch of uh, hangouts and things at Lock and Load. Mm -hmm. So we will we will be diving, uh, diving deeper, diving, diving diaper. Mm -hmm. um, more, <laughs> I got Tony with that one. <laughs> Uh, we'll be we're going more into what that kind of stuff is at Lock and Load and then afterwards. Yes. As in, in previewing what else is in Oblivion. Yeah, there's a lot of information coming up. Uh, somebody asked, are there going to be any Warjack, Beast, or Horror Bonds in the campaign? Not in the initial one, but the mm -hmm. way it's been built is the system of how you interact with it. And then, like I said, we plug in new campaigns. Mm -hmm. So we're going to release more campaigns that if you own Oblivion and you have the deck and the book, yep. in the future, we're just going to give you free campaigns that you can slot in. So that's 16 new scenarios or more every single time we do that. Uh, some of those might introduce bonds later on. We wanted yeah. this the, the book one to be the basic idea. Because yeah. for somebody who's never played a branching tree narrative campaign... It, it, you got to read the rules and, and see what's going on, and then you got to read every scenario and, and deal with their special rules. And for a casual player, it's just at the edge of, of like, okay, this is a, you know, I've got to play my army, and then I've got these new things to deal with. And we wanted to not overcomplicate things too much. Mm -hmm. But we will probably add bonds in the future. Um, Joe Tortilla asks, can we expect the Oblivion themes dynamic update before the box? Probably not. Striking on 11 said, you have I would a guess that that would be timed really close to, re to the release of that box. Yeah. Striking on 11, is there a limit on Omen cards? Yes, three. Well, three per game that you can play. There's no upper cap on how many you can earn because you'll, if, you, if you don't spend them, you'll earn way more than you can ever use. Yeah. So if you, if you earn one and you don't use it, it's available next game. But if you earn like four in the first two games, you're only going to use three yes. in that third one. So the main exciting thing, I think the one, one thing we really wanted to educate people on with this is give you a first kind of look at it. Yeah. Obviously you want to sit down and read yeah. the rules, but also to let you know that this is the beginning of a new style of league. It's mm -hmm. a new style of, of narrative stories we'll be doing for War Machine in the future. In that, when you have Oblivion and you've got the core rules of how to use these campaigns, we can just release a, a PDF that has a new campaign, mm -hmm. and if you've got the Omen cards with you, 
you can play that. And we'll be able to do this for things like Summer Rampage or Narrative Leagues throughout the year, yeah. however we want to, and we intend to. We intend to develop them. They do take longer than a normal league to develop because we have to create 16 plus brand new scenarios and then play test them all yeah. and how they interact with the Omen cards. So there is a bit more time involved. So you may see less leagues next year, but you will see more involved and more in-depth leagues, all of which mm -hmm. we intend to use the Oblivion system. So if you pick up the Oblivion box, you're gaining a campaign system that's going to be used for quite some time yeah. for your War yeah. Machine and, and Hordes games. Uh, and that's how we want to tell the story of Oblivion and how it will continue on, in addition to any other future like books and stuff we do in the future. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's see if we have any other questions to get to before we call this stream. It'll be a little bit of a short one. See anything you want to My answer, My only question, question is why does Facebook hate us? Facebook's being weird. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Sorry. everybody. We, uh, we tried. Um, no, I think, I think we hit them all. A couple people asked questions related to the answers you were giving as you were giving, giving them. them. So I'm sure those people's questions have been answered. Um, Travis that, wants Infernals. Travis asks, when can I have Infernals? The answer is lock and load. Yeah. Infernals will be at lock and load. I had, we had a really interesting question earlier. This, the, you guys were drinking out of these cups. Yes. So I haven't experienced the cup. Don't drink the dice. In a real way. Um, someone asked if the cup changes color or if the water inside the cup changes color. If the water inside the cup changed color, that'd probably be toxic in some weird way. Like, you don't want the cup turning the water. That means it's putting something in the water. Mm -hmm. Like Kool-Aid. Like Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. So, uh, the cup changes color. It could be red or blue, destroyer or protector colors. Yes. And you don't know which one is which. And Unless they're not, are they numbered on the bottom or something? And there is the mythic brown cup. Oh, the brown cup. There's really? One, no. It's like a golden ticket kind of thing? Like, no. Like one in every million is brown? No, I'm lying. Oh, okay. Um, and Winter Golem wants to know when will the Infernal Rules be released shortly before Infernals come out. We're actually working on getting those in War Room as we speak. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, you gotta do uh, damage webs and all those new things that are part of the Infernals? Yes. So the last question we want to answer before we get out of here, somebody on Facebook said, uh, did we say when the book and Oblivion and everything releases? Uh, expect it around Gen Con. Mm -hmm. that's, so our, that's our target date, is a pre-release of Gen Con. Yep. So expect the Infernal models to be at Lock and Load, and expect Riot Quest and Oblivion. Uh, Riot Quest will be at Gen Con, and then expect Oblivion either well, at, at Gen Con. Well, unless a truck, you know, loses a tire or something crazy. Sure. Like, we always hope that all the releases we plan for, something like Gen Con, will be there. But sometimes, sometimes things miss boats. Yep. But it should be there, as should be Oblivion, but we'll see. If you get the brown cup, by the way, it does turn the water brown. Don't. There's no brown cup. You said it. It's not my fault. So, everybody, join us tomorrow for Get Your Paint On at 10 a.m. with Jordan. Mm -hmm. And then, last reminder, uh, no more streaming this week. Next streams you'll see will be a lock and load. Yep. After Which, after May thirtieth, we are not doing any more streams until Lock and Load. Yep. June twenty first through twenty third. So mm -hmm. you're gonna have a few weeks without us streaming. Um, yeah. Tony's gotta pack all this stuff up and walk it over to the hotel, like one box at a time. It takes him a long time to get it over there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alec wants to know if there are gonna be Archons at Lock and Load. I actually don't know. Do you know? It's it's very it's very difficult to tell exactly which models will be at a show, even up to the point of, like, we are aiming for bunches of Infernals, but there will be production issues. Like we always talk about. Production sometimes has problems with certain models. Molds don't work right, you know, that kind of stuff. Sure. So we have a tentative, this is what we'd like to take to lock and load list. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's going to be there 100%. That's why we don't promise things to you guys about what exactly will be at Lock and Load. Like, there's going to be Monpoc pre-releases at Lock and Load, too. There'll be Infernals. But we don't know what Monpoc models will be there. And we don't know if every single Infernal will be there or if the first 10 Infernals will be there or whatever. It just depends on the closer we get, the more we know. And then you, you'll never know until you show up at Lock and Load and see what's on the store shelves. So, sorry, Alec. Don't know if Archons will be there. Hopefully so. If they're not, I will glue wings to Hamilton and throw him at you. Also, um, uh, Dorian watched the live stream last year at Lock and Load and heard my horrible, horrible, horrible allergy voice. Yeah. I have been staying on allergy pills 
even though I don't have any problems with allergies right now. It's called addiction. Just to keep the, it in my system. Yeah, so it's called addiction. If I do have to live stream next year, the one day I have to live stream, I won't be a complete and total wreck with no voice. Because I would like to avoid that if possible. Bye, everybody. Yeah, we're done. Enjoy the rest of your Ooh. lunch. Ooh, pork angel. The rest of your lunch. Yeah, a lot of people are on lunch right now. Yeah, but some people.